Hello again everyone, I hope you're all doing good. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. This time I'm focusing on protein function and comparing globular and fibrous proteins. My previous video looked at amino acids, dipeptides, and we also talked about primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary proteins. So this time I'm actually focusing more on telling you about different types of proteins and their functions in living organisms overall. As you well know from my previous video, that a protein may consist of one polypeptide chain or several polypeptide chains linked together. Hydrogen bonds between amino acids causes it to form its secondary structure and then its tertiary or 3D structure, which is held by ionic and disulfide bridges as well as hydrogen bonds. It is this folding of the chains and the bonds that gives that protein its function. And if the bonds are broken, the protein can become denatured as it loses its tertiary structure and therefore its functionality. Firstly, let's look at different types of proteins and the functions they play in living organisms, and then we can move on to look at specific examples. Enzymes are globular proteins that catalyze biochemical reactions. Enzymes are folded to present polar R groups at the active site that will be specific for polar substances. Non-polar active sites will be specific for non-polar substances. We will look at enzymes in a bit more detail in the next few videos. Transport substances across the membrane for processes such as facilitated diffusion and active transport are carried out by cell membrane proteins. So, Hydrophilic molecules and ions are then able to pass through these channels into the interior of the cell. Ion channels are found in nearly all cells and many organelles, and we'll cover this topic in a bit more detail when we get to the cell membrane part of the syllabus. The third one we're looking at is hormones. Hormones are passed through the blood and trigger reactions in other parts of your body. For example, insulin being released and that regulates blood sugar around your body. The fourth one is antibodies. These are made by lymphocytes or white blood cells and act as antigenic sites on microbes. We'll come to look at this in a bit more detail when we look at the immunity topic. The next one is looking at structural proteins. These give strength to organs, for example, things like collagen or elastin. The next one is transport proteins, which are proteins such as hemoglobin. This is an oxygen transporting protein found in vertebrate red blood cells. Hemoglobin is a quaternary structure protein as it consists of four polypeptide chains. You might remember this from my previous video. And then the last one I want to talk about is contractile proteins. For example, proteins such as actin and myosin. These proteins help muscles shorten during contraction and you'll learn about these more in A2 when you look at muscle structure. So the next bit that we really need to know is that proteins can be classified according to structure or function. Globular proteins are spherical and soluble in water, and enzymes fall into this particular category. Fibrous proteins have an elongated structure and are not water-soluble. They provide stiffness and rigidity to cells and tissues and have an important structural or contractile role. Things like collagen fall into this particular category. This table shows you a direct comparison of globular and fibrous proteins. You can see that the globular proteins have a tertiary structure that is crucial to its function and that the polypeptide chains are folded into a spherical shape, hence the name globular, sounding like a globe. These globular proteins can have functions that fall into four categories, catalytic functions such as enzymes, regulatory functions such as hormones, transport functions such as haemoglobin, and protective functions such as antibodies. Fibrous proteins, on the other hand, are very tough physically but can be supple and stretchy too. They're made up of parallel polypeptide chains and long fibres or sheets. They have two-part functions. They play a structural role in cells and organisms, in the example of collagen and tissue, skin and blood vessels. And the second role is contractile, in the case of muscle proteins such as actin and myosin. We can look at three examples of fibrous proteins. Collagen is the main component of connective tissue and is mostly found in fibrous tissues, for example, tendons or ligaments and skin. Elastin is another fibrous protein which allows tissues to resume their shape after stretching. And the third example is keratin, which is found in hair, nails, animal horns and hooves. It is also found in wool, feathers and the outer layers of skin. The polypeptide chains of keratin are arranged in parallel sheets held together by hydrogen bonding. Right, so that's me done on this video, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it useful as ever. If you've got any questions, please comment below. 
and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Please make sure you like and share these videos as well with your friends if you found them useful, they probably will too. I'll be posting up some past paper questions very soon, so make sure you look out for that. Thank you again so, so much. Bye for now.